So I'm stood in front of a new Kia Sportage, even though I just reviewed one a couple of weeks ago. So why? Thanks for asking. It's because this is the plug-in hybrid electric version, the FEV. It's the most powerful, it's the quickest, and yet it's the most efficient version of the car. So big question is, is it any good? Is it the best one? It should be. Let's find out. All right, so let's just give you a little bit more detail about the drivetrain of this thing. What you're looking at here is a 178 horsepower, 1.6 litre petrol engine linked to a 90 horsepower electric motor and powered by a 13.8 kilowatt battery pack that's good for a claimed 43 mile electric only range. This is the first time that the Sportage has been available with a plug-in hybrid, which means it's by some distance the most economical Sportage ever, on paper anyways. Okay, so that's the drivetrain. What are the actual pros and cons of this thing? Because it is more expensive, but that's pretty much the only con because the pros are the fact that it is the quickest one on paper, it's very quick at least. It is very, very efficient, especially if you use it the right way, if you keep your battery topped up and if you're using it over short distances. And also the tax benefits if you're like a company car driver or fleet user or whatever are absolutely immense. Now, Kia says that because of the way they've set this up, because of how efficient it is, it is one of the most tax effective plug-in hybrid electric family crossovers on the market. Just 8% BIK. And there's a couple of advantages that it has that make it that way. The first advantage is that it charges quickly, well, relatively quickly as compared to most plug-in hybrids. So as standard, it comes with seven kilowatt charging speed capability, whereas usually you get half that speed. And that means that because the battery is pretty small, it gets charged really quickly. Convenient. So the battery, according to Kia, will get you over 40 miles of electric only range. Now, obviously we know with these things that that is never the case, but that sort of number suggests that what you will actually get is 25 to 30, which is still gonna be more than enough for most people who are using this as a commuter car, short distances to work and back. Now, obviously this is a launch event, the battery is full, but what I've noticed is that it is actually pretty keen to stay on battery power alone. Next thing we're going to do obviously is test what the transition is like between electric and petrol power. Let's do that, foot down. Okay, so it's quiet and it's relatively smooth, but also it's a pretty big gap there. Now Kia has developed the six speed automatic gearbox specifically for this application. Now the good thing about that is it doesn't matter that it might be a little bit sluggy, I haven't really found out yet, but even if it is, it is going to be better than the CVT type setup that you quite often get in plug-in hybrids. They're just awful. All that rubber banding, that sense that you have to wait to get it to the power band, the noise, horrible. This already, only driven it for half a mile, feels like a far, far more conventional setup. And it does feel really, really refined. Now that was something that was very apparent in a standard Sportage, if you like, one with just a petrol engine. I haven't driven the diesel yet. But what this does is because it's in electric power quite a lot of the time, it's trying to stay there. It gives you even more refinement because you're not having to deal with the internal combustion sound as much as you would in a car whose power only comes from internal combustion, obviously. So I can already tell you that this is the most refined version of a car that is brilliant at that anyway. Now I have already done a video on this, so you should watch that if you want a more comprehensive overview of what this car's like in general. But what I basically said there is that this is the best mid-level family crossover on the market now. Now the only problem I had with the standard Sportage is that the engine is a bit gruff, right? And this setup is a 1.6 petrol engine but it's attached to an electric motor and a battery setup. What you'll find is that you will still get that little bit of gruffness if you accelerate hard. It's just the nature of the beast. It's definitely the wrong word. The nature of the thing. So I'm actually going from a 30 into a 60 here. So I'll show you, right, listen. See, so it's not gruff as such, it's just a bit characterless. It's actually very well muted, and you do get that natural sense of gears changing when you're using all the power. 
because of the way they set the gearbox up, because it's got like a more traditional automatic gearbox attached to the setup. But the good thing is that by default, this becomes the most refined version because it's either running again on pure electric power or the engine's not being worked as hard because the two things are working together. Now the ride quality does seem to have degraded ever so slightly, which is an obvious thing really, because actually the way they've packaged this car is by placing the battery under the chassis. So if you look under the car, you can see it's covered, obviously it's protected, but the battery's just strapped to the bottom of the thing. So what you've got is more weight pressing down. They've had to adjust the suspension slightly to cope with that, but it always means that you get that little bit extra fidgetiness in the ride quality that the other versions just don't have. So it doesn't feel quite as outright luxurious. One of the most amazing things that I thought about this car when I first drove it is it does in some ways feel like a luxury car. It feels much better than you would expect a mid-level family crossover to be. And this obviously feels the same, but you just have to pay a little price in terms of the outright comfort for the battery setup and the weight that you get, the extra weight. Good low-end throttle response, assuming that you're not pushing things too hard. If you just want to get by quite gently, it does pick up fairly quickly. Really light steering, it's quite sharp. The body control's really good, both in terms of the cornering of it and in general, the lateral body movement is actually quite well controlled. It almost just has a feel of a car that's on big wheels. That's kind of what the main ride quality is like. Now, from a packaging perspective, the cabin itself, because of where they've put the battery, doesn't lose any space. So it's exactly the way that another Sportage would be. Sometimes they have to put the battery under the rear seats and they get lifted up and then you lose headroom in the back. That's not the case here. You do lose boot space though. So let's jump out of the car and look at the boot. Now, let's check out that hole. Do you know what Toby, the cameraman said about this boot? He went, it's definitely much smaller. He didn't say it in Geordie because he's not Geordie, he's from London or somewhere. But I've left this stuff in here so that you can see how much you can get into this boot, even though it is smaller. I'll show you it empty though. Now. now, the reason that this hole is exactly 51 litres smaller than the hole in a standard Sportage is very simple. It's because there's stuff underneath the floor linked to the plug-in hybrid system. You've got the charging system and the 12 volt battery under here. What you're left with is a tiny little polystyrene tray where you can stick your cable and a little bag, not much else. So going back to what I said at the start about reasons why this is more efficient or slightly better than other equivalent plug-in hybrids, it's actually because not only have they developed the gearbox specifically for efficiency, it's got a small capacity engine. So for example, if you look at the Ford Cougar plug-in, that's got a 2.5. What they've done here is given it a 1.6, but a slightly more powerful electric motor. So you get a 90 horsepower motor. Total capacity is 261 horsepower. Again, doesn't feel that powerful, doesn't feel that quick, but what that gives you is this sort of sense of effortlessness so you don't really have to work this hard to get it moving along nicely and therefore you should see some fuel advantages for that reason. Now weirdly, upper levels of this car not only get extra four-wheel drive terrain type settings, they all get four-wheel drive as standard, but if you get one of the upper two trims, you get terrain modes so you can have extra traction in snow and in mud and stuff like that, which is kind of useful. But you can also get something called e-handling, right? Yep they've given this a handling benefit with the hybrid. So what it does, the electric motor itself is actually attached to the transmission, yeah? So it's not out of the back on the back axle. What it can do is if you're powering into a corner, the electric motor acts as like a torque vectoring thing on the rear axle. So it kind of breaks the wheels a little bit to transfer the weight to the front so you get more front end grip and then better turn in. And then once you've turned out of the corner, once you're going back into the straight, it then gives you more power at the rear so you can power out of it a bit. Now, Kia says it's subtle, so I'm guessing it's not the sort of thing that we can actually demonstrate by barreling into a corner and going, oh, this handle's nice for a big fella. I think it'll just make it feel that little bit tighter around a corner. When I get to one, I'll tell you, my aim is to try and make Toby feel sick. All right, so I've come to a corner. Let's see how e-handling works. Put down into it. Just felt like a big lardy crossover, <laughs> but quite a nice one. Steering's really good in this thing, you know. It's quite a lot of body movement. I don't think e-handling is gonna be a selling point for anybody here, to be honest with you, but I'm just glad that they did it. <laughs> As with most of these things, it's got driving mode, so you can select whether you want it in hybrid mode or electric only mode or like power save mode. 
I always find these things a little bit pointless though because you'll put it into electric mode and then if you put your foot down too hard or the battery runs out obviously or whatever then it just decides that you can't be in that mode anyway and yet in hybrid mode it will always want to be in electric mode so I think it's just about making you feel like you've got control over something. Anyway I put it into electric mode and let's see how far we can get before the engine kicks in. Feather in the throttle here it's really not that happy to accelerate because obviously we've only got 90 horsepower dragging along a car this heavy. I'm doing 35 now into a 60 and there's the motor. In fairness, the transition of the motor is really good, but once it hit 40 there, it just didn't want to know any more with the battery. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I need petrol. Just by the chassis a little bit, so it does have independent suspension all the way around and it has fixed damper settings. You can't get adjustable damping in this car. And actually, I didn't think I'd say this ever because usually adaptive damping setups just really don't make that much difference because you're constantly just trying to figure out whether it really is a bit softer or it really has got a bit harder. I probably could have put that better, I couldn't. But I do wonder whether in this car it would make a bit of a difference because it does feel a little bit like this car would benefit in certain situations from softening the damping up very slightly. But it does actually feel a bit heavy. It does feel a bit like it's slamming down when the tires hit something that is a bit less than smooth. I guess what the hybrid here does though, in a fundamental sense, it feels very normal in a good way. It's very efficient, you know, it really is a sort of plug in and play type experience. You don't have to mess around with driving modes. You don't have a horrible CVT gearbox to deal with winding. It feels very conventional, very quiet, comfortable, almost luxurious in the same way that the standard or that a standard Sportage is. What having the hybrid drivetrain has done though, aside from just making it much more tax efficient and hopefully more economical for you, it just make it feel even more techy, even more high-end, because the car basically feels like that anyway. It's got this amazing cabin. I love these haptic buttons that control the aircon and the infotainment. And it just feels like the sort of car that has melded loads of technology together, but into a package that just feels like really well sorted out, really coherent. It's actually really lovely to drive. There's no hint that there's too much going on here even though there really is some of the stuff this car has got, especially the top end is amazing. For example, it has a cruise control system that's not only adaptive in the sense that it will accelerate and brake and stuff like that, but it also hooks up to the sat nav. And then if the car knows that there's a corner coming up, even on a motorway, there's a slight bend, it will adjust your speed accordingly so that you don't go around that corner too fast. It's dead good. It's got some amazing tech in this. I honestly think that particularly with this car, Kia has leapt above everything that Volkswagen and most of the other mainstream manufacturers are doing at this price. In fact, probably all of them. It's that good. For me, there are only really two things that you ought to be thinking about alongside this for slightly different reasons. So you've got the Hyundai Tucson plug-in hybrid, which is a very similar experience to this for obvious reasons, but mainly the Peugeot 3008 plug-in hybrid. Now, as an overall package, it's not as refined as this thing is, not quite as comfortable, not quite as spacious or just easy to live with, but it is more interesting both aesthetically and dynamically. So I think that is something that if you want a bit of a driving experience with your tax efficient family wagon, then the Peugeot is definitely something to think about. But I reckon still, this is the best one. Well done, Kia. And we'll end it there. Thank you for watching. Bit different to our normal stuff that, but if you liked it, please check out our other reviews, leave a like, sub to the channel, and whatever you do, don't forget that the best leasing deals are here with Vanarama. Have a lovely day. Bye then.